What is going on YouTube? Welcome back to another video. This is going to be the definitive guide to pandas for Python uh, second video. Uh, shouldn't have any errors uh, this time going through. I already ran the, uh, the updated version of pandas on this particular file. So let's get right to, uh, to it. So we got import pandas as PD. Again, new, new, uh, this is a new file, so we have to still import pandas so we can use them. And I'm also have uh, from matplotlib import pyplot as PLT. You can download matplotlib uh, the same way we do going to settings, has the interpreter, you can hit the plus sign and then type in matplotlib. Or you can go to the um, that other website where you have the wheel files, download the wheel for your particular CP version of Python with the appropriate 32 or 64 bit system, whatever you have going into your command prompt, CDing, uh, changing directory into your appropriate download directory, and then uh, pip install, and then that whole wheel file name. So we're going uh, straight up. We have df equals pd.readcsv, and we're using the same gap minder, which is a tab-separated volume, but we're still utilizing the readcsv method, and then we're telling it that it's separated by a tab. Um, then we're going to print the head and print the columns because it's always, I always like to know what the data looks like that I'm using and also to know how the labels are actually organized, meaning like life expectancy, the E is capitalized or GDP per cap that the P is capitalized. So I know, understand how the labels, I'm sorry, how the columns are labeled and how the rows can even be indexed and so forth. So we do our head, which gives us by default the first five, and then we're printing the, the DF dot columns as well. So. Let's us start to apply some actual operations to the to the data. Let's actually utilize it, manipulate, and get some information. So first, we have here what is the average life expectancy for each year? So again, this whole data frame it, it has countries, continents, and it has years. Then we have life life expectancy. So what is it by year? Uh, can we can we somehow cleanly get a list for that? So first off, we're going to split the data into years, and then we're going to grab the life expectancy column and calculate the mean, which is the average on that extracted data. So going through, we did, we uh, print df.group by, and then we're grouping by year and then life expectancy. So we have the year in, in, um, in open and close parentheses, and then we have life expectancy in the brackets, and then we're calculating the mean based on what we just extracted. So extracting the year, extracting the life expectancy for those respective years, and then calculating the mean on that, you can see over here on the right, we have breakdown by year. We have 1952, 57, et cetera, and then the breakdown of the life, ex life expectancy. So we can see quickly looking at this trend here, uh, going from 52 to 2007, an increase in life expectancy, uh, and we haven't gone down uh, just yet. But again, this, this data only goes to 2007. So going forward, uh, we're gonna create a group object that has a new group uh, data frame, so group years, data frame esdf.groupby and we're grouping it by the year. So again, now we've created a variable group years data frame and we're telling it um, group it by the year. That's what the dot group by does within uh, pandas. So if we print that out, we can see that we have a new data frame group by object. So the object is stored in the data frame here and you can see that here. If you might have been expecting data, but all we did was print the object that we created. And then the next line that we have, I just want to click out of that so we can actually scroll down. In memory, again, we created a new, let me go across here. You can see first we created the uh, data frame group by object, then we're creating a series group by object. And that's simply by the uh, the assignment. So here we did the data frame. So of course we have the data frame df dot group by, we ran it by year. And then below that for grouping life expectancy data frame, we have group years data frame, which was this variable up here. So that data that we're pulling into that variable. And then we're saying, what's the life expectancy from that group that were created before? So we're gonna run a series based on the data frame. And then we're saying print that series out. So when we're creating a data frame, it's not gonna print the data frame, it's just gonna give us uh, an object for it. And then again, we're saying print the series group, so that's we have the series group here, and that's all stored in memory. So then we have uh, knowing life expectancy column is a float 64. Vector of numbers, it's happy to allow mathematical operations. So what I did here is I did group um, life expectancy df dot mean so we're applying the mean function now to that uh, series so we have the data frame object that was broken up by year grouping up by year and then from that data frame object we grouped by we, we took a group years data frame and pulled out the life expectancy column 
and then here we're applying the mean to that column. So again, here we have 52, we have the, the mean uh, of life expectancy going down just like we do up above. So just another backwards way of doing it. Now we can go across, I'm gonna move this more. Uh, we're doing mathematical operations that can be run on the integer and floats, so population and GDP. So we're gonna print the population grouped year by, that's just a string that we're gonna print out so we can see it here down on the right. Uh, data frame dot group by, so we're grouping it again by year and then population. And just make note that with the first parameter that we're passing has parentheses and the second one has open and close brackets. And then again, we're applying the mean. This is similar to what we had done before up above. So we're gonna FA through that so we have our year and then we have the population grouped by year. So this is the population and we have our exponent of seven. So uh, as you can see, it is a rather large number and that is the GDP. Uh, per capita that we utilized before. You can see if you go through the head that we printed out, here is the population, and then here is the GDP per capita. So we're going by population grouped by year first. Um, and then the next line, we just have GDP is grouped by year, and then we did the same thing. We're creating a group by, and then we're applying the first parameter to be the year, and then the second parameter to be the GDP per capita. And just make sure when you call it that you're uh, writing it exactly the label exactly as though as how it exists in the data frame which is the capital p and then we're applying the mean to all of that so as we go through it here we have now the mean for the gdp uh, per capita broken up by year throughout our entire our entire uh, data frame um, there is some hierarchy going on here with the year continent row so let's go through that I wanted to show that if you were to, um, where did I just run that? So if we had, or I have year and then continent and then life expectancy and then GDP per capita, what I did in the first part, you can see we have parentheses and in the parentheses, I pulled out two parameters, the year and the continent. So that's, that's we're grouping by the year and then the continent. And then from that year continent and group, we're creating the series life expectancy and GDP per capita, um, and then calculating the mean on that. So all we did here is, and it, it did it accordingly, we have the year and then it broke out the continents based on year and then it pulled life expectancy and GDP per capita, uh, performed the mean on those, on those, uh, those categories. Um, in terms of hierarchy, let's see what happens if we, so we, you'll see I reversed it here. Here we have year continent and then we're organizing that by life expectant GDP per capita and then we have life expectant GDP per capita and then we're asking it to put out the year and the continent and calculate the mean on that. So it should be different because we're, we're uh, performing a completely different operation. And you can see, sure it is. Can we switch the list order? And what happens is now we're grouping everything. Um, the reason we have so much more data, you can see it even splits. So this little sign here in the interpreter is telling you that uh, the files, it's still going. It's just going to give you the beginning and the end, almost like a modified version of head and tail. Um, when we're using those methods. So it's telling me 1704 rows, and this is not print out 1704 rows, but it would have had to do to some degree because it's saying for all life expectancies of 23.599 with a GDP per, per capita of 73.7, with all that, what year did that come out? And it's 1992. Um, and so you can see we, there's no way you can even, and you can't perform a mean on the continents. That's why I didn't print anything out for the continent here. But there's going to be a different life expectancy and a different GDP to capita for every year because they're so they're so specific that it, this is a very essentially a dumb way to try to group data. But it's good to play with this stuff because then at least you can see that that's not a good way to group data. It was more appropriate to group it by year and continent and then from the year continent organization pull out the life expectancy and the GDP per capita um, and perform the mean on that. That just made a heck of a lot more sense. Running through now, we're going to, let me go down to the bottom. There, uh, This is not a misspelling, it is an unique frequency count. So this is what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be taking um, the data frame that we created above using the Gapminder tab separated volume. We're gonna apply the, how many times does something unique show up within that data frame? Uh, that's This is great for searches. And we're gonna tell it what we want it to find to be unique. So in this per first part, we have df.groupby, and then we have continent, country, and we want to know the unique values that are appearing within that. So as we come down, it's telling us the continent, Africa, Americas, Asia, Europe, Oceania, and it's telling us how many times the uh, how many times the, do they have unique entries for those particular um, the continents that we pulled out that particular data frame. And then 
So what you're kind of, I, it doesn't label it, but I just want you to realize, if you look at the order we did it by here on the group by, we have continent, so we have our continent list, and then the country, and then we have the countries. So there are 52 unique countries that showed up in the Africa group by. There are 25 unique N country, N unique numbers, N unique countries that have showed up in the Americas. There's 33 unique countries that showed up in Asia. So you don't see the country labeling, but that's what the number is representing. Uh, to do going through so then I just have here whoops a daisy um, same but using a different method we're looking at the occurrence of each value so we're going to get this is a printout now showing the continent Africa and then the country and then we have how many times is that country showing up within how many times does Algeria show up with Africa and it's gonna be 12 all the way down then we see it for Europe and we see those countries 12 and then Oceana only has two countries, but it's showing up 12 times. And that different method, as you can see here, is just value counts. So we have two different ways of doing this. First, we did the DF group by, and we used N unique, and then we have DF dot group by, and we're using value counts. Both of them are pulling continent and country as its, um, as it, as, as its pull. Of what we want to pull out of it and then going down we're gonna end all this off with a graft so what are we actually graphing well here I'm just creating a variable the life expectancy uh, global globally by year so we're creating a, a data frame dot group by and we're saying for each year take out the life expectancy and calculate the mean on that group it by years so take so for 1954 take all the life expectancies and then calculate the mean on that and then that's what it's creating here in memory. And then we're saying print that life expectancy of the global year, which you have here. So for 1952, going through all of the continents and then all the countries, taking all of the life expectancies that was reported and calculating the mean on it, this is what we have. And then we're telling it to graph it. So now we're using plt.plot. Now that plt, when I go up here to the top, you'll remember that from matplotlib import pyplot as plt, well, the PLT is how we're going to call that module. So now on the bottom, this is the first time we're actually calling matplotlib because we want to create an actual graph. Um, so I'm saying PLT.plot is the method that we're applying to matplotlib. We're, we're utilizing the plot uh, functionality of matplotlib, and I'm telling it what to plot, which here is the life expectancy global a year, which is what the data you can see to the right. So as you can imagine, one column is going to be year, and the other column is going to be the uh, life, expect life expectancy. And then in order to actually make it print, we have to do plt.show, and then I have open parentheses. I could have put uh, plt.show, and then I could have life expectancy global of the year if I had given that a, uh, a, a figure variable. So we'll F8 through that, and it should put up a graph, which it did. So here in my IDE, it just popped up a graph that I have here, um, and we're going to do a lot more graphing uh, going forward. Uh, but of course, you can see here on the y-axis, we have the life expectancy in years. And then on the x-axis, we have the uh, years that we calculated the mean on with that life expectancy. Um, you can, if you want, you can manipulate graphs. You can sit here and play around with it. You can drag it around. You can zoom in. You can zoom out. You can change um, parameters of the graphing uh, just by messing around with these switches. Let's reset that. Uh, and then you can also save this particular image if you wanted to. Um, when we use Jupyter Notebooks, you can run graphs in line, but you'd have to tell it. Um, percent sign matplotlib in line or in line map so that it would know to run the graph in the notebook and not try to pop it out externally like we have here. Um, but graphing will get really fun, especially when we utilize matplotlib and then we go to Seaborn uh, and so forth. Uh, but second video for definitive guide to pandas in Python. Um, play with it, pull out the data, change pieces around, get into the premise of like df.groupby, whatever variable name is, dot group by, and then using the, quotation, the, the parentheses for the first call and then the brackets for the second call in terms of how, you're, how you want to group the, the data and then exactly what are the criteria you're grouping it in. Um, just play with it, have fun, and I will see you all in the next video.